Joining us now exclusively are Kerry Larson, Michael Hiwanosa, and Captain Kevin Freestone. Good morning to the three of you. Uh, how are you feeling, first of all? I mean, the I'm, injuries alone. I'm in a lot of pain, but it's getting better every day. Now, this we saw some of the scars there in the piece a second ago. This just wasn't uh, a little bruising and a cracked rib. Tell us, I mean, the full extent of exactly what this fish did to you. Um, well, the hole in, it, it opened a hole right up in my side. Um, shattered a rib where they eventually had to remove the rib and just pick pieces out because it was just in little shards inside me and punctured my lung. Uh, Michael, you're in the kayak. You see this barracuda in the distance, probably never expecting it to, to jump on the, on the kayak like it did. When it did, describe the situation and what you saw. We were about, we were out of, north of Big Pine, which is the island that we live on, feeling we were really safe. Uh, I spotted in the distance a giant barracuda coming in our general direction, probably 40, 50 miles an hour, really moving fast and skipping across the water. We'd never seen a fish of this size jump before and certainly didn't expect uh, what happened to happen. It exploded on our left. Carrie never saw it. It hit her in the rib cage and threw her out of the boat. It was moving really fast. It shattered her ribs, like she said. She, I had her scramble back onto the boat and when I saw the wound, she had a hole in her side this large. I p cut my hand over it. The, her lung was trying to pop out into my hand. I realized then that she might not make it. And I was really, really scared. I, I didn't know what I was going to tell her family if she didn't make it. Carrie, what are you thinking? Because you had uh, some EMT background, so you right. must have had an idea. Maybe you couldn't see it, but you had to have an idea just the extent of how serious this was. Right, yeah, as soon as, as, soon as I got back into the boat and sat down, um, I had a towel and I looked down and it was just completely saturated with blood. So I knew I was losing, you know, a lot of blood. And then from the way I was breathing and the extent of the pain, I could tell it was a rib injury and uh, could hear the gurgling, so I knew I had a punctured lung. Michael, you're saying to yourself, okay, hopefully help will be here in 30 minutes, maybe 20 if we're lucky. When it got past 30 minutes and you're still standing there and you've got your hand on Carrie like that, what are you then saying as the time continues to elapse? She didn't want to talk about the injury. She wanted me to talk about positive, happy things. So I began realizing she's going to have a lot of time off of work. So I started talking about potential vacations we could take, places that I could take her to visit. She'd never been to Europe. I pestered her into getting a passport. So yeah. she has a passport. I wanted to take her to Europe. So I began like trying to distract her away from from what was actually happening, because it was just too long. You make the call to Kevin. Kevin, when you arrive on the scene uh, and you see the extent of what has happened here, what are your thoughts? Um, it was uh, when the paramedic, we, we, we shot across the flat over there, and he, he got me on the phone and said, hey, today's the day you need to save a life. Um, she's dying in my arms. We shot across that flat and uh, got up alongside, and you could see she was in pain, but very coherent. Uh, very sitting pretty strong. Yeah, Mike's sitting there. He said it's bad. We put the paramedic on the boat and uh, The paramedic looked at me after he looked at the wound. He says get me an inclusive dressing and he's looking around like this is bad Yeah, so I knew an inclusive dressing was a sucking chest wound and it did, did just look really serious hey, Carrie what thoughts are going through your mind? well the first the d one of my first thoughts is of my daughter and um, So one of the first things I thought of is she's getting married June 30th, and I need to be able to walk her down the aisle. And uh, so I just kept thinking that in my head, you know, it's d keeping positive thoughts and uh, just waiting, waiting. That was the hardest part. It's such a big part of your life, being out on the water. You guys do it every week. How difficult is it to, to continue going back out on the water or think about being back out on the water? Well, we worked, we worked on that. We, um, we would go to a restaurant near the dock and sit there and by the fish and we have a, our houses on the water. So it's, it's hard. I've, I've been out on a boat twice since then, just recently, and, and I did pretty well. I did pretty well. Well, we wish you continued success in your recovery. Thanks for coming up here and sharing the story with us. Thank you. Scary. You're lucky. Very, yes. lucky. Very lucky. Thank you to the three of you, Carrie, Michael, and Kevin.